we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Here are 10 things that I am not buying anymore in 2023 and will probably rarely spend my money on again in the near future. Cutting out these things has helped me save so much more money every month without sacrificing on my quality of life and at the same time giving me a lot more financial freedom and the ability to splurge on things like trips and experiences. The first being latest tech. The rate at which companies like Apple and Google are rolling out upgrades to things like laptops, mobile phones, tablets and smartwatches is insane and way exceeds what we actually need in our lives. I've had my trusty iPhone XR for more than four years now and it's still going strong so there's really no reason why I should cave in and get a replacement just for the sake of it. The second thing that I've cut out is going to the hairdressers. So I've only ever done my hair in a salon once when I was overseas and yes it turned out pretty nice but I couldn't justify the $450 price tag. Growing up my mum would always cut my hair for me. But as I've gotten older, I like to trim and dye my own hair as I find it actually kind of therapeutic. Women's haircuts are so expensive and the minute you add in bleaching, colouring or treatment, the price tag can blow up to almost $750, which is way more than what I'm willing to drop on my own hair. Next, I've stopped buying sale items that I don't need. Remember there is a big difference between buying something you need that's on sale versus buying something purely because it is on sale. When I was in my early 20s, all I wanted to do was to shop the clearance racks at any kind of end of financial year sales. Whenever I got an email or I saw a pop-up in store that said, take a further percentage of sale items, my heart would literally beat faster, I am not exaggerating, and I almost felt like a hunter trying to secure the best possible deal. I mean, having a pair of jeans that is originally $200 on sale for $100, and then a further 30% off meant that I would only have to pay $70, which is such an amazing deal, right? Until I realized that I never needed this pair of jeans to begin with. And the store was just playing mind games with me in order to justify my purchase. Now let's talk about unnecessary subscriptions. These ones are really sneaky as they're generally a very small amount of money being deducted from your bank account or your credit card every single month. So you hardly even notice the balance going out. Apps also like to loop you in with a free trial that requires you to enter in all your banking details and then you forget to cancel and immediately you are hit with a very hefty annual or monthly fee. So my advice is if you want to take advantage of free trials, go for it, but just don't forget to mark a reminder in your calendar to cancel it. What I personally like to do is cancel the free trial immediately and don't worry, in most cases you will still have access for the entire duration of the trial. You will just get a pop-up notification that says your plan is cancelled, but you still have full access until the end of the month. Perfect. The best of both worlds, right? Now the next one might be controversial, but I'm trying to avoid going to cinemas. This might also just be personal preference, but I have never been a fan of how icky the cinema seats are. And also watching a movie in a cinema is so expensive unless you get your hands on student or discounted tickets. The average adult cinema ticket is a good $25 each in Sydney and the minute you get a drink or you get popcorn, your cinema experience for two adds up to almost $60 to $70. I'd rather much wait a month, rent the movie online or wait for it to hit streaming services and then watch it in the comfort of my own home for a fraction of the price. The next item is something that gets talked about a lot and that is takeaway coffee. If I'm really honest, I don't think it is as big of an expense as some of your major ticketed items like haircuts, but it still adds up over time. Getting one $5 latte every day equates to almost $2,000 every year spent on coffee, which I can probably fund an entire holiday with. Again, it's personal preference as I have a fully functional coffee machine at home so I really try to avoid getting takeaway coffees unless I am desperately tired and really need one or I'm catching up with friends and it's for a social purpose. And just to clarify, I don't have any issues with going to brunch and ordering a coffee with my meal. Another rule I have is I don't pay for full price things unless I really, really need it. I mean, there's obviously things that really go on sale and I just gotta buy it. But for most things like snacks, clothing or appliances, I'll just wait it out. There are so many stores out there and they're always changing up their catalogues. So if you're patient and you keep an eye out, chances are you'll find the same item you needed on sale in a couple of weeks time. 
I also don't take taxis or Ubers and I will try to take public transport as much as I can. Taxis are so expensive and they usually take a pretty similar amount of time to public transport anyway, so I would rather not pay $50 to get me from A to B just for the sake of convenience. And lastly, I don't buy shares in the stock market that I don't understand. When I first got into the stock market back in 2018, I got very lucky with a few short-term trades, which made me think that it was extremely easy to buy low and sell high and make quick money. But after a few disastrous single stock purchases, the peak of the COVID tech bubble, I've now learned my lesson and I will only invest my money into ETFs or into single stocks that I really believe in. So that was the 10 things that I'm not going to be spending my money on in 2023. Um, I know this video might not be for everyone, but it is just my own personal preferences and what has worked for me. I recently watched Erica Kohlberg's video and she said something along the lines of, there are two reasons where you should not be spending money. Firstly, out of habit. And secondly, for the sake of your own ego in order to impress other people. And that really resonated with me. And to summarize, I don't have any problems with spending money. I just want to make sure that I'm using it wisely and on the correct things. That's all I've got for today's video. If you enjoy this kind of content, please give this video a thumbs up. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.